Hey housing guys, in this video series, I'm going to show you how to automate pivot tables using VBA in Excel. Alright, so I'm going to divide this tutorial series into three parts. For the first lesson, I'm going to show you how to create a pivot table using VBA. For the second video, I'm going to show you how to configure different pivot table options. And you have a typo. And pivot table options are basically uh, different settings that you can configure to a pivot table. In the last video, I'm going to show you is how to delete pivot tables. All right, so here you have a sample Excel file. And you can download this data set from this link in the description below. So basically, this is a sample data set provided by Microsoft Power BI. And it's what the table looks like. Let me put this on the left. Now to get started, you want to go to the developer tab, click on Visual Basic to open the VBA window. Here I'm going to insert a new module. And I'll name the module. Here let me name the module to let's do M Pivot Tables. If you don't see the module properties window, you can press F4 to launch the panel. Alright, so I'm going to close uh, both panel, the properties panel and the project panel. Alright, so here I'm going to create a subroutine. I'm going to name this subroutine create pivot table. Alright, so every time I create a pivot table, I also have an expect pivot table that I want to create. If not, then I can simply uh, manually create a pivot table that I want to mimic in. So here, let's do that. I'm going to select the table, then go into the Insert tab. And here I want to select Tables, Pivot Table. And I'm going to create this pivot table in a new worksheet. All right, so here I'm going to drag a couple of fields to, here let's do Country to uh, Row Section, Import out to Columns. For the filter, let's do uh, year. And for the values, let's do uh, let's, let's use sales. All right, so this is going to be the pivot table that I'm going to mimic in using VBA. So here I'm going to create my variables and objects. I'm going to declare my workbook variable as WB. And worksheet objects. So this one's going to be the source worksheet. And this one's going to be the report worksheet. So for my Excel file, I have source data tab and report tab. And report tab is going to be the uh, worksheet that I'm going to insert the pivot table. Next, I'm going to create my last row variable, last column variable. And because I want to set my uh, cell range dynamically, based on how many columns and how many rows my table has, all right, so here I'm going to uh, declare my data range object. So I'm going to name this object source data range as range. Next, I need to create my uh, pivot table cache object. So I'm going to name this object PD cache as pivot cache. And this one will be pivot table as PT. Alright, so these are all the objects and variables that I'm going to declare. Here I'm going to create my workbook object. So I'm going to set WB as this workbook. So this WB object is going to reference uh, this Excel file. And here I'm going to set WB as nothing when I finish running all the uh, executions. Next, I'm going to create my Washi object, actually Washi target object. And it's going to be this workbook, that worksheets. And I want to reference the report worksheet. And set Washi target. It's not the same. All right, so this is going to be step number one. Define my pivot table data source. I'm going to create my source worksheet object. So I'll type set WS source. This equals to WB worksheets. 
in my data sets coming from source data tab. I'm going to name uh, this routine clean up. And right here, I'm going to insert air handler. So I'm going to type on air, go to air handler. And here, I'm going to type access up. And this is going to be my air handler. If I run into any air, I want to print the air message. They want to go to the clean up position. All right, so let's continue. So here I'm going to insert a with statement within the source worksheet. I want to create my last row and last column variables. To get the last row number, so here I'm going to type dot sales rows count. And I want to get the last row number based on count A. Dot n up. Dot row. Next, I want to get the last column number and assign the number to the last column variable. So here I'm going to type dot sales. And I want to determine the last column based on the first row. And it's going to be columns, sorry, columns dot counts. Dot end. Excel to left the column. Let's take a look. Now I want to define my source data range object. So I'm going to type set source data range. It's equals to that range. And as I mentioned before, uh, this is going to be dynamic. So my uh, starting position is going to be from the first row, first column, all the way to last row, last column. And I'm done with the uh, width statement. All right, so this is going to be step two, create pervert cache. So a pervert cache is basically uh, saving the table in memory for future pivot table creation. And to create a pivot table cache, I'm going to type set PD cache. This equals to uh, this workbook dot pivot cache, actually pivot caches dot create. Since my data source is already uh, stored in the Excel spreadsheet, so I'm going to choose Excel database. Next, I need to specify the source data cell range. And here I can insert the source data range object. Oh, and here I need to uh, set those objects as nothing. And this one will be PD cache. And put the table. Once I construct my uh, pivot table cache, I can create my pivot table. Here I'm going to type set PT and PT is pivot table it is equals to PT cache dot create. It should uh, create pivot table. And I want to insert my pivot table to the target worksheet dot range. And here I can uh, specify the cell, uh, the cell address that I want to insert the pivot table to. And let's insert the pivot table in cell C5. So I'm going to type C5. And I'll name my pivot table cells report XYZ. Now, if I simply run this uh, create pivot table macro, and it's going to create the uh, report editor, which allows me to insert the pivot table fields. Here I'm going to insert with PT, meaning that within the pivot table object. And there are a couple of things we can uh, configure. 
So this one's going to be uh, show grand total. It should grand totals. To display grand total across the columns, we need to use the column grand property. You can set the value to true or false. So if I want to display grand total across all the columns, I'm going to set this value to true. Same thing for the rows. If I want to display grand total across all the rows, I'm going to set the row grand, actually row, to, uh, row grand property to true. Next, I want to uh, specify the pivot table layout. Going back to the pivot table, if I go to design, on the report layout, I have these three types of layouts. And to set the uh, pivot table layout type, here I can use the row axis layout method. And that gives me uh, three options, compare, outline, or tabular. I'm going to use tabular, which is the most popular layout option. Next, I want to set my uh, table style, or pivot table style. So here are all the pivot table style that we can use. All right, so to set the style, we need to reference the table style to property. For the style name, here, let's go back to the uh, styles. So here we have lights, median, and dark. So the name uh, convention is, if I want to use the median style, then I'm going to type pivot style, followed by medium. So this is the uh, style group name, followed by the style number. To determine the style number, so I want to start from the first row and count from the left to the right. So this one's going to be style one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And let's say I want to use this one. So this is going to be style 10. So for the style name, it's going to be pivot style median 10. And if I want to use the light style, then we'll change median to light. And I'm going to come out this line and I'll use pivot style median 10 style. And I'm going to press F5 to recreate the pivot table. Oh, and here I have a, I'm here. All right, so let me come out this line first because I'm still uh, developing my FIBA script. Here, let me uh, press F5 to run the script again to tell me uh, where in my script is causing the issue. All right, so it's saying that I cannot create a pivot table in cell C5. Let me check. Oh, I know why. Because here I already have a pivot table builder inserter. So let me stop everything. I'm going to go back to the top. Now what I want to do is I want to select the target worksheet. Next, I want to clear everything on the report tab. So I can type WS target dot sales dot clear. Now let me try again. So if I run the macro. Now this line is giving me an error. Let me check. I can see that uh, my Excel file is a little bit uh, freeze. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to save this Excel file. I want to save this file as a uh, macro enable file. So under the file type, I'm going to choose macro enable workbook and save this file. And I'm going to close this file. And I'll reopen the file. I can see that my Excel file is back to uh, the normal state. Now let me open the FIBA window again. I'm going to rerun uh, this FIBA code. This time I'm able to recreate the pivot table builder. All right, now let's go back to the pivot table creation. To create a pivot table, we need to assign uh, different pivot table fields. So here I'm going to Insert notes, add pivot fields.
And let's start with the filters field first, or filters section. Filters. Within the pivot table object, I want to insert another with statement. And this one's going to be pivot fields. I want to insert the column that I want to use as my filter. If I go to my source data, let's use, uh, let's see, let's use the year column as my filter. Inside the pivot fields property, I'm going to insert the column name. Inside the pivot fields property, I need to specify the orientation. For filters, it's going to be Excel page field. Oh, and one more thing. If I want to enable the multi selection, they want to set the enable multiple page items property to true. Now let's say I want to insert two filters, not just one. Let's choose another column. Let's use the product column as my second filter. So I'm going to copy uh, this code block and I'll copy and paste. I'll change the uh, column name to product. Now, if I run the macro, it's going to create the pivot table with these two filters building. And notice that here, when you insert a pivot field, the VBA script will always add a field on top of the uh, first field that you created. If you want to switch the order by uh, having the year filter on the top, then you will create the uh, product filter first, followed by the year filter. And I'm going to press F5 to create a pivot table. Now the year filter is on the top and the product filter is on the bottom. Here, let me increase the, uh, the zoom. Right, so that's for the uh, filters. Now let's work on the rows section. So this is going to be rows section. To determine the layers, you want to figure out which column you want to be the parent and which column do you want to be the, the child. Now let's say I want to, uh, let's see, let's do country, followed by segment. Here we have country as the parent, segment as the child. Unlike the purple fields for the filter section, when we insert the purple fields for the uh, row section and the count section, uh, the sequence is actually in the logical order. So let me show you what I mean. All right, so I'm going to insert the country field first. I'm going to copy this code block. And I'll copy and paste. And here I'm going to change the uh, field name to country. And I'll change the orientation to Excel row field. And I don't need this line. Now this is going to be the parent and it's going to be the child under the country column. And this one's going to be coming from the segment column. Now, if I press F5 to run the macro, and it's going to recreate this identical pivot table. And let me set the grand total to false, meaning that I don't want to display the grand total. Oh, so these are subtotals. If I want to turn off the subtotal, here let me insert, insert the link. If I want to turn off the subtotal, so the default uh, function the pivot table uses is the sum function. And from this list, we need to reference here. Let me type the uh, property first. And it's going to be subtotals followed by the uh, function that I want to turn off and to represent the sum function. I'm going to set the value to false. Now going back to the pivot table, and if I run the macro, it should turn off the subtotal. Here, let me check. Sum of sales. Here, let me change the index to one. Okay, so one is the correct uh, function. So once the correct index, let me take a look. 
Right, so by default, uh, pivot table is going to uh, try to determine the function based on the engine of uh, what data type that you're trying to aggregate. So that's why I need to use one, not two. Now if I want to insert a subtotal based on a, a specific aggregation function, here let's go back to the documentation. And last I want to insert a subtotal that gives me the average based on the country field. So I'm going to change the index to, to four, and I'll set the value to two. Here, let me try it. And I'll generate the subtotal, gives me the average for the country field. All right, so I shall leave that there. Now let's work on the column section. And this one's going to be uh, identical to the row section. So I'm going to grab uh, this statement and I'll copy and paste. For the column pivot field, I'm going to use the months column. Oh, and this should be Excel column field. And what's going on here? Oh, it should be months name, not months. Right, let me try again. Okay, we now have our basic uh, pivot table layout. Now, the only thing that's missing is the values. For the value pivot fields, I'm going to copy uh, this statement and I'll copy and paste. I'm going to insert two pivot fields. This one's going to be sales, and the second field is going to be profit. And I need to change the orientation to Excel data field. All right, so inside the uh, values pivot field, I need to specify the function that I want to use. And here, let me grab the link. So from the consolidation function enumeration list, these are all the functions that we can use. For the sales column, I'm going to apply the sum function. And I'll copy the enumeration value and just copy and paste. And for the profit field, I'm going to use the average function. If I want to specify the uh, formatting, we can use the number format property. And here we can set the uh, format that I want to uh, display. And for the average, I'll do the same. And let me create the pivot table. So this is what we have so far. And this is one more thing I want to show you. So notice that here we have this values field. And this values field will determine how you want to uh, group your fields. So if I put this on top of the month name field, and notice that the structure is going to uh, change based on where you place the values field. So if I place the values field right between the country and segment field, and it's going to change the uh, pivot table structure. So with this, you will have to play around with it. But if you want to uh, manipulate the values field, and let's call this, uh, I don't even know what the proper name is for that. Let's name that as group by values level. And to reference this uh, values field, we'll reference the data pervert field property. Inside the property, we need to uh, specify the orientation of we want to insert the uh, values field. Let's say I want to insert the values field to the row section. I need to insert extra row field. Next, I need to uh, specify the position where the uh, field is going to be. So if I want to insert the values field right between the country and segment fields, then the, oops, then the position is going to be two. Now I'm going to recreate the pivot table. And if I want to set the values field to the uh, last level, then I need to set the position to three. 
So this is something to share in this video. And hopefully you guys found this video as well. For the next video, I'm going to show you how to configure different pivot table settings using VBA.